In dire situations, people tend to want to stockpile things, as most of us found out in 2020. Food, water, fuel, soap, and even toilet paper are items usually on the top of the list for most people. But then there are some who, for one reason or another, put steam engines at the top of the list. After the Cold War started, both the US and USSR put emergency plans in place in the event the Cold War ever became hot and Armageddon arrived. Russia at the time was working on modernizing and electrifying many of its rail lines, but by the late 60s realized it'd all be for naught if something were to happen to the power grid, be it destroyed via bombing or disabled via EMP. Given how vital railways would be in such a scenario, the USSR needed machines that would be able to operate without electricity, and so they decided to keep some steam locomotives in reserve. Most steam locomotives are purely mechanical, simply being a load of metal parts that require nothing but fire and water to function, meaning they wouldn't be affected in any way should the power grid fail or an EMP go off. On top of this, while most engines require coal for best performance, they can still run on anything flammable provided it burns hot enough, such as wood, oil, or even gas, making fueling them relatively easy in a situation where large fuel supplies become inaccessible. Naturally, steam locomotives were more awkward to maintain and less efficient than diesel or electric engines, but in an all-out nuclear Armageddon scenario, that wouldn't really matter too much. All across Russia and the USSR, steam locomotives were taken out of service, repaired to working condition, and stored in old warehouses, stations, military bases, or even just old sidings. These engines varied from relatively modern engines built in the 50s, all the way to engines built as early as the 30s from all over the USSR. What makes this plan especially interesting was that these engines weren't just parked and forgotten about. They were frequently maintained and kept in working condition long after steam power had disappeared from most countries around the world. For years, these engines stood, parked in sidings, ready to be steamed up and deployed should D-Day ever come. Luckily for us, Doomsday never arrived. Most engines in these yards were frequently maintained until 1991, when the Soviet Union finally dissolved. Afterwards, the threat of the Cold War died down, and as a result, the engines were deemed unnecessary to maintain. Some were just outright scrapped in the 90s, however, quite a few were purchased by museums and put on display, especially some of the older engines, as they were some of the few surviving examples of their kind left. Even museums as far as China have taken an interest in the engines. Many of the remaining ones have simply remained untouched, just staying sat in sidings, exposed to the elements, rusting away, still adorned with red stars on their front. Some engines are in better condition than others, with some still capable of being moved in one piece, while others are rusted and rotten well beyond repair. Most have had smaller parts such as side rods, buffers, and number plates taken as scrap or souvenirs by thieves. While the majority of these engine graveyards aren't accessible to the public, at least not legally, there are a few that have been open to visitors and allow people to explore these rusted remains, such as the yard near Shumkovo railway station in Perm Krai. In the end, while many of Russia's abandoned engines are quite a sad sight for rail enthusiasts, let's just be glad that they were never used for their intended purpose. Subscribe for more.